Hey everyone, I thought I would do a quick run through of your lab assignment this week. Uh, we are doing a caffeine open field assignment. I recorded the behavior this afternoon and it's all available up on the usual Google Drive folder. So you can access that and begin scoring now. So uh, why did we do this? Well, we know caffeine is a locomotor stimulant and we want to assess um, exactly how much that's going to elevate a rat's motor behavior in a simple open field task. Uh, we're doing a slight modification of the standard open field called a light dark open field um, where it's what it sounds like during the first four minutes of the task the rat is in a, uh, a dark open field um, and then after four minutes a uh, bright light is switched on and then um, the rat is allowed to explore the field for four more minutes and then is removed um, so during that initial dark period, the exploratory period, the standard is uh, similar to a standard open field. We're just getting sort of like a baseline measure of how exploratory this rat is, how much ground is it going to cover, how quickly is it going to move uh, during standard conditions. And then during the light period, it's sort of an assay of anxiety, right? Rats don't like bright light. Um, they're little prey animals and they like to avoid being detected. They don't like being in bright light. So when we turn that bright light on, it provokes some anxiety. Um, so two things that we're going to look for is a suppression of movement. So they should be moving less while the light is on and they should try to avoid the light. So they'll move as far away as they can from the light, at least under normal conditions. So here's what we did. Um, I injected the rats with uh, 3.2 milligrams per kilogram of caffeine uh, 15 minutes prior to the test, interperitoneally or uh, vehicle solution. Um, same volume, uh, same time point. Uh, after 15 minutes, I placed them in the center of the bin under dark conditions and let them wander around for four minutes. After four minutes, I switched on a bright light at one end of the maze. It's important to note that this doesn't uniformly light the maze. It produces a light gradient where some parts of the maze are more brightly lit than others. Um, in response to that light, normal rats show a couple of things. One, decreased locomotion during the light period, and two, decreased time spent near the light source during that light period. So here's a little animation of that. So during the dark period of the test, the rat should explore and look around, explore its environment as much as it feels like. And again, during this time period, we would expect because caffeine is a motor stimulant that it will, uh, rats that have been given caffeine should uh, cover more ground during this time. However, when we turn that light on, we produce uh, one end of the uh, field that is very brightly lit and very aversive to the rats, and one end of the maze that is still pretty dark, uh, where the rats will feel more comfortable hanging out. So when that happens, we expect the rats to decrease the amount of ground they cover and just sort of settle in and stay in the dark side, trying to avoid that bright light and trying to avoid detection. So what are you going to score? First off, uh, you'll notice right away when you look at the video that I have crudely divided the apparatus into uh, eight sections uh, with some tape. So what I want you to do is record the number of crossovers they commit. We're going to score a crossover as every time the rat puts four paws into a new square. So every time the rat fully commits to a new um, compartment, a new square with all four paws, that's a crossover. So you need to score the number of times the rat does that each minute through all eight minutes of the test. This will give us a crude measure of how far they moved and will let us answer the question as to whether or not they suppress their movement when the light comes on. I also want you to score the amount of time they spend in zone four for each minute. Zone four is these two boxes here that are the furthest away from the light element. So all the way on this side. Um, do this for all eight minutes so we have a baseline to compare it to. And this will give us a nice little measure of do they avoid the light? Do they spend more time in zone four as far away from the light as they can get when the light is on versus when the light is off? Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, so. What kind of questions are we trying to answer with this? Uh, let's sort of go over uh, some hypotheses that we might have here. One, we expect that rats given caffeine should commit more crossovers than the vehicle injected rats overall. Because it's a motor stimulant, we expect them to cover more ground across the test. Um, one hypothesis we might have is that rats should not decrease their crossovers during the light period. If the caffeine's got them so jazzed up that they're not able to really suppress their movement, we won't see a decrease when the light comes on. At the very least, maybe we'll see that they don't decrease their movement as much as the vehicle injected rats do. Um, likewise, we expect that rats should spend more time in zone 4 during the light period than during the dark period. Um, we might expect that rats given caffeine should not show that preference or might show less of a preference than do the vehicle injected rats. So if they're not able to suppress their movement, maybe they're not going to stay in that zone quite as much 
Um, we'll see how the data plays out. So your job with all this is to score the data by the end of this week. So by Friday, 4-3, please sit down and score this data. And just like last time, confer with your lab partner to make sure that your numbers are roughly equivalent. Uh, and then put one value into the Excel sheet. Uh, turn in your lab report by next Thursday, 4-9. Uh, you're getting an extra day because I am getting this um, data up much later today than I anticipated. Uh, and as usual, what I want you to do is take the available data and analyze it as you see fit, right? The whole challenge with this is to try to answer the questions that I have posed with the data that you have available. So uh, do whatever you think is best and uh, be sure to test those general hypotheses that we talked about. As far as format goes, follow the same rubric, rubric and general approach as we did for the first lab. Um, if, of course, if you have any questions or you're having technology trouble or you can't figure something out, uh, don't be shy about asking for a meeting. A number of people asked for Zoom meetings or just asked me questions by email last time. That's totally fine. Uh, don't be shy about reaching out if you need help. Um, as a little tip, if you're not really sure where to start, I lifted the behavior for this behavior directly from this uh, paper that I really like um, from the Fanslow lab. Uh, so if you're curious how that was analyzed, you can look this reference up. It was a little bit different as it was a, a different experimental approach, but you can see how they analyzed and graphed their data if you're uh, curious. Or not even just this um, group. You can look at how other um, papers have tested open field or locomotion data and maybe draw inspiration from that. Um, okay, that's all the info I've got for um, lab report number two. Uh, good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you.